now we can move in, on to on to our first speaker. So as I, as I said, this is Professor Eduardo Ramos. Eduardo is a senior researcher at the Renewable Energy Institute of the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He did his um, bachelor's in physics at UNAM and his PhD in fluid mechanics at the University of Manchester in the United Kingdom. His research interests are varied, but mainly centered about, uh, around theoretical and experimental analysis of fluid mechanics and heat transfer, including the interaction between solids and fluids in conditions similar to those applicable to wind energy. And today he has a very teasing title. Is it possible to efficiently collect energy from hurricanes in Mexico? So welcome, Eduardo. So the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, good. Excellent. So, um, well, first of all, uh, before I start the presentation, I would like to, to thank the organizers for inviting me. And um, I warn you, this is uh, just a, a kind of a reflection. It's not a, a, a research report, but I think it's uh, provocative and interesting. So even though it started like a, like a, just a crazy idea, then um, some some uh, interesting uh, pieces of information start uh, coming up in place, and uh, things I think I hope that uh, it will be um, will be something that you could uh, go back to your places and think a little bit deeper. Um, okay, so um, also I, I have some uh, difficulty in being stable when I change the screens. So uh, please forgive me if I keep uh, making mistakes in, in, in the rolling of them of the information. So let's start. Um, is it possible to efficiently collect energy from hurricanes in Mexico? There we go. Okay. In order to, to try to answer this question, I would uh, uh, give you uh, some motivation on, on why this, uh, this idea is uh, at, at least worth, just for fun, but worth uh, taking into account. Then I will talk about the energy source, which of course will be the hurricanes. And then the, the device, which is, um, which is the, the kind of uh, wind turbines that we would need to, um, to catch the energy from the, from the um, hurricanes. Okay, well, the motivation is that uh, for, for an, anyone living in, in Mexico, the hurricanes are very important. We hear in the news that uh, hurricanes uh, come very, very often to, to uh, to Mexico and we uh, know that they come from the Atlantic, they come from the Pacific. And um, all we hear is that uh, hurricanes are very destructive and we wonder whether the, the energy that is contained in a hurricane can be uh, some, somehow uh, usefully uh, captured. Now, um, just to, to give you a formal definition, a hurricane is a tropical cyclone with a with wind speed in, in, in excess of 33 kilometers per hour. And there are some categories, Sapphire Simpson categories are defined in this way. But, um, but uh, for the time being, um, I'm, I'm not very concerned on, on, the, on the actual definitions but rather on, on a little bit more in detail. Okay, so the question is, um, can the, the, the energy be captured? And, um, and um, well, the idea of, of uh, uh, getting the energy from, from hurricanes is not new. Some people in other parts of the world have had the, the same idea, and um, I have here the, the an example of the Chalin, 
Chal Energy, uh, wind turbine um, in in Japan. And uh, once you you think that the that the energy can be captured, then your imagination just flies because um, you could uh, people tend to to exaggerate. For instance, in in here, I have that. Um, it, in the news, they say new turbines can let a single typhoon power, uh, power Japan for 50 years. And this is obviously ridiculous because uh, th this is assuming that we can take the energy from the, from the whole structure and convert it into, into useful energy. And obviously that's, uh, that, that's out of question. So um, let's try to uh, keep our feet on on ground and um, and try to, to to think a little bit more clearly it, moreover and this is this is not um, this is not to the the uh, popular press this is a nature uh, a magazine a, a holding a uh, an interesting uh, paper in uh, 2014 is saying that timing hurricanes with arrays of offshore wind turbines is, is an interesting proposal. So these people, these people are thinking seriously about, about playing uh, around with hurricanes. And these guys are not, uh, are, 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 are to be taken into account. They are people from Stanford University. So we, we should think about it. Um, it some people think in a very optimistic way about this idea, and some others think it in a, a very practical way. As you can see in here, you can uh, detect the, the damage that a hurricane um, in the, the made to, to these wind turbines. So uh, this is, this is a, an interesting question to be taken into account. Um, Okay, first of all, let's, um, let's try to, um, to give some very broad uh, numbers to, to consider what is a hurricane. Well, first of all, uh, um, we were going to, to assume, to, to think that a hurricane has a, a diameter of 1,000 kilometers and that it takes about 16 hours to, <clears throat> to move over a specific spot. The azimuthal velocity is about 60 meters per second. And uh, the radial velocity, that's the azimuthal velocity going, going around 60 meters per second. And the right radial velocity, 10 meters per second. And the vertical velocity is nothing. It's six centimeters per second. All these quantities were given by a uh, Professor Emmanuel, which is, who is perhaps the, the, the the uh, uh, most important authority in the in the uh, in the topic, uh, he works in MIT. Okay, now let's try to be a little bit more specific. Um, we know that the the energy. Um, uh, if you look at the hurricanes in a very uh, 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 simple way, they are very energetic, but let's try to, 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 to take a closer look at the, the energy content in a hurricane. And let's assume that I go from the eye of the hurricane, which I understand that you, you are well aware that the, the center of the hurricanes is a well-determined uh, region. If I go from the, the eye of the hurricane, if I go from there outwards, then and I uh, plot the velocity, the azimuthal velocity, as uh, as function of radius. Then I will get something like this: a, a a very steep rise in the in the velocity, and then something like um, exponential decay. It's not exactly exponential decay, but people have made a uh, models that capture very much uh, with with a lot of precision the the generic distribution of velocity. So just to, to give you um, uh, uh, big numbers, uh, wide numbers, 
the, the eye of the hurricane, or, or rather the place where we can spot the, the maximum velocity is, is about uh, 30 kilometers in radius. And then as, uh, as, as we, uh, as we uh, saw uh, in the last uh, sc uh, screen, the, the radius is about 500 kilometers or the diameter 1,000 kilometers. And it is there where the, the velocity falls to about tw um, 12 um, meters per second. That's, the, that's more or less the, the um, accepted values. Two things that are important to consider. First of all, is that the, the distribution is not uniform. So if we're interested in catching the, the energy, we have to go close to the eye. And, um, and secondly, is that the distribution is more or less generic. So uh, uh, we can more or less um, think that we can, uh, we can make some calculations with uh, this uh, distribution. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into details because I, I can see the time, time is running very fast, but I will, um, with these estimations, I will uh, try to give you an idea of the, of the um, power that is contained in a hurricane. And as I said, I'm not going to, to go into details because it will take me uh, forever, but um, if I calculate a, a, a number for the hurricane power, power, it would be a three times 10 to the 12 watts. And uh, just to give you an idea, a Mexico power consumption is 2.3, 10 to the 11 watts. So the, the power is, is uh, uh, perhaps uh, 10 times what the, the, the power of Mexico is. If you go to the kinetic energy, you integrate in time this uh, quantity, and assuming that the um, that the uh, um, that the hurricane lasts sixteen hours, then the energy would be something like uh, ten to the sixteen uh, joules. And to give you uh, some perspective, this uh, in Mexico the power consumption in one year, the energy power consumption in one year would be seven point seven ten to the eighteen. So um, it will be uh, one hundred of the of the energy consumption of the whole country in one year, but nevertheless still a very very big quantity. Okay. Now, let me also talk a little bit about the translation velocity of hurricanes. Um, the, the hurricanes uh, move at more or less a, um, a, a reasonably constant speed. And uh, this is uh, illustrated here uh, as uh, the, 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 the blue line. And if we, we take the average and also some simulations that are accurate in this respect, we find that the velocity of the hurricanes is about 18 kilometers per hour, which is um, uh, five meters per second. And if we consider that the diameter of, the, oh, sorry, the radius of the, of the hurricane is, um, is uh, 500 kilometers, then the maximum duration of the influence would be uh, more or less uh, on, on the other of uh, 26 hours. So this is this is also interesting. If we are in, if, if we want to catch the energy of uh, of a hurricane, then we have around around 28 hours to to um, catch the, the whole amount of energy. So we've got to be very, uh, we've got to, to move fast in case we want to do that. Okay. Now, there's another thing that, um, that I, from my own point of view is important. And in my opinion, it has been a little bit overlooked in the, in the literature. As we uh, are perfectly aware, 
a hurricane contains uh, a lot of water. As, as we know, a hurricane is uh, the, the, the a energy input of a hurricane is the, the thermal disequilibrium between the ocean and the atmosphere. And it takes water and it uh, brings it up and then it falls as rain. Okay, but if we have a very strong wind and a, a water drops that are uh, dispersed in, in it, then we, we also have energy in the water drops because the water drops are moving. And given that at least in parts of the hurricane, the velocity is large, then the, the drag coefficient of the, of the uh, uh, drops will be uh, large. And perhaps we can assume that the wind carries the, the, the drops. There has been some, some research in this. You can, you can check it in the, in the um, reference I'm giving you here. And if we take a look at, say, two, two uh, characteristic um, examples, one in, uh, the, in Baja California, Cabo San Lucas, and we can, we can see that the, the annual precipitation is uh, 222 uh, millimeters. Uh, remember, we, we count the amount of, of the height of a pool of water in, in, a, in one square meter. And a, if we take the, the amount of uh, water that is, the, the amount of precipitation that is increased due to the presence of the, of the hurricane, it will be around a, a factor of two. And then we can calculate the, the mass that is the mass of water that is falling. And in, in doing so, we can <clears throat> establish the amount of energy, kinetic energy of the water droplets that are contained in the, in the hurricane. Uh, doing the numbers, I'm not going into details again, but <clears throat> in doing the numbers, uh, we can see that um, uh, the, the energy content, the kinetic, kinetic energy content of the, of the uh, uh, in the hurricane due to this uh, concentration of water, we would have to multiply um, the, the, the energy by a certain factor. In Cabo San Lucas, it would be a factor of 1.2, which is, which is relatively small in the sense that uh, the, the, the energy content would be about the, the, the sum of the air plus the, the water would be something like, like um, two times the, the energy of, of air, of the mass of air in, in motion. But in, in Cancun, which is closer to the, to the equator, the, the, the amount of energy, the amount of water that is uh, contained in the hurricane is much larger. And the factor is about seven. And I think that this is something to, to keep in mind when we uh, uh, make numbers. There's a large difference. In, in the amount of kinetic energy that we are considered that, that, that we uh, should take into account. Okay, now this, uh, are, these remarks are just what happens in the, in the normal in the normal uh, hurricanes that we have now uh, that we have observed in the past. Now what's going to happen if we consider now the the uh, global warming. There, there has been some some um, studies in trying to predict what's going to happen in future, and we can see that this quantity, uh, the, the the quantity that I'm plotting here, is uh, it, it, something that has to do with the, the energy content. And if we plot the well, not we, but uh, Professor Emmanuel plotted the amount. Uh, 
amount of energy that is content in them in the hurricane the trend is that it is going to go up and that's that is very interesting because it seems that in future even though the number of hurricanes is not going to to be much larger than than the numbers that we have been observing for the last say you know 50 years or so nevertheless the the, the strength is going to to increase and in terms of uh, of energy content that's also interesting because um, we will have a larger energy energy source now what what about the the velocity in which the the, the, the hurricanes are moving well we see that the, the velocity is going to be more or less the same so um, if they keep moving at the same speed, we will have more or less the same time to, cap to catch the, the energy. This is just a glimpse of what might happen in, in future. Now, how many hurricanes are there in Mexico? There's a, a very interesting study in in uh, the journal Atmosfera, which is a, specializes in, in in, in uh, the meteorology in, in Mexico. And a, a very long historical uh, record indicates that there are about 2.1 and a very large dispersion, plus or minus 1.6 hurricanes per year. And uh, the, the, this, is, this is a little bit misleading, this information that I'm giving you, the, the one that is in the, in the paper is perfectly accurate, but this, is, um, th this takes into account not, not just the hurricanes, but also the, the tropical cyclones that might be in, in the context of the, of the present talk, it might be considered something like a, 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 a small hurricanes, uh, weaker hurricanes. But well, anyway, th this gives us a, a, a perfectly reasonable idea. It will be in, in the Pacific coast of Mexico, 2.1 um, hurricanes per year. Now, if we go and, and try to be a little bit more specific, then um, in, uh, in Baja California, which is the, the place where we, we can detect the largest amount of uh, tropical cyclones, we have something like, just in, in Baja California, about one, one uh, tropical cyclone per year. And in Quintana Roo, something like um, one tropical cyclone every two years. This is something also that is important to consider because uh, the, the energy source is going to be a little bit scarce because it, it, from our point of view, from the point of view of considering um, it as, the, as an energy source. Let me, let, let me comment a little bit about the difficulties in, in catching the energy of, the, of a hurricane. The first of all, First of all, is that the, we don't exactly know where the hurricane is going to hit. And uh, there, there are some models that to forecast the, 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 the position of them, of a hurricane. But as you know, as, uh, those of you that have seen the, the, these forecasts before, we can see that, the, the, let, let's say, the center of the hurricane is given just as, a, a, as, as a, an average. And there is kind of, a, of, a, of an angle or a cone, if you want, um, that gets wider and wider if we go further and further in, in future. So if let's say that we know that a hurricane is somewhere in, in the sea, in, in, in the Atlantic, and we want to know where is it going to hit the land so that um, we put or we 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 uh, take our our um, um, a wind turbine at at that position, and we try to to see we try to be in in the best spot. Okay, that's good, but that won't be known too much in advance. We will have to to 
live with an uncertainty and move fast to try to, to actually catch the, the system. In, uh, in the graphic on the right, we, you, you will see that if we want to, to make a, a long-term prediction, uh, days, it will be very, the, the, the error would be something like, uh, like uh, 500 kilometers. If we want to, to if, if we are happy to, to know in a 24 hours in advance, then we are, can be much more accurate and will be something like 50 kilometers. We, we might be wrong by a, a, a 50 kilometers um, uh, uh, tolerance. Now, remember that the, the most energetic part of the hurricane it's only about 50 kilometers in, in, in a radius, let's say 100 kilometers in diameter, and you have a hole in the middle, but uh, let, let's say that you, you have 100 kilometers in diameter. So this will be not um, negligible. This is, this is something that, that we, have, we must take into account because we might be in the wrong place, it, uh, depending on, the, on, on how accurate the forecast is. Okay, there's another bit of uh, difficulty which should be taken into account and which is, in my opinion, um, the, 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 the most important argument against trying to get inform in energy from a hurricane. And that is that energy storage is required. Um, if you have a hurricane, with this large amount of energy and you want to uh, catch them, the, uh, the energy, you have to be uh, very fast because it will go away fast. And so even, even assuming that you, you, can, you can actually catch the energy, what are you going to do with it? Um, it would, it, it, it's unthinkable that you, you would fit it in the, in the grid because it will it, it will burn the grid in, in, immediately. So you have to, to, to uh, store it. And one possible way to, to store the, the energy of, uh, of a hurricane is uh, to, to keep the part of the energy, let's say in a dam or in a pond, at a high position so that it can have something like a, like a lot of, um, of potential energy. This can be done because it has been done. And so this is, this is possible, but it's, uh, it's a little bit unrealistic because you're not going to, to build a pond or, or, or a dam where the hurricane is gonna hit. So, um, this is not very real realistic in the sense that if you don't have the facility there, then, then it will be a little bit out of question. And by the way, this, this idea was given to me by um, Dr. Oscar Martinez. And um, as I said, for instance, in, in, in Chiapas and, uh, and Tabasco, this is, this is very reasonable and this is being done, but in saying Yucatan would be unrealistic. Okay, there's another possibility with li liquid metal batteries, but I don't have time to, to discuss it in detail. And this is also very unrealistic. Okay, let's talk about the device. What kind of, uh, of wind uh, turbine are we, are we gonna need to, to do this, um, this job? Well, as, um, as I said, um, um, a Japanese company claims that uh, they have a, a um, system that can catch the energy. And uh, this is a kind of a vertical axis wind turbine, but instead of having blades, it has uh, um, uh, cylinders and the cylinders are turning around in such a way that they create Magnus effect. We will talk about this in a, in a second. But the important thing is that um, this um, 
these wind turbines can stand wind up to velocities of 70 meters per second, which is well within the range. And they claim that they are correct, they, they, that the uh, wind, um, that the, the, the wind turbine has a, a, a worked correctly in a typhoon already with a, a velocity that is 30 meters per second, which is above them. The, the, norm, the velocities that we can catch with the standard uh, um, designs of the uh, wind turbines that are used at present, but uh, just a little bit above where we're talking about uh, 30 kilometers against 25 kilometers. Okay. And also, it's very expensive. I, if you have the money to pay for it, go ahead. Okay. Now, let me very quickly tell you the this is a very interesting idea using Magnus effect because a, by rotating a cylinder we can create a, a, a force in the perpendicular direction of the, of, of the stream. If we expose a rotating uh, cylinder to, to a wind, we can generate a, a force uh, perpendicular to it, and if we if we do it in the proper way, then uh, we can actually uh, make the the system turn in an um, in a very very uh, efficient way. Um, I'm very sorry that I don't have the time to 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 talk about this in in detail because I think this is a a, a very interesting idea to explore both for hurricanes and for, for some something else. But um, for the time being, let's, um, let me just say that in, in a, 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 a system of this kind, if we, if we are careful and we make the cylinders turn around in a, um, in a um, correct way, then we can make the system go with a, a force that is uh, very, very reasonable, which is four times the, the force on each cylinder, which is very interesting. But um, this, uh, in my opinion, needs a lot of research. It's um, for, for the time being, we're just, there's very little information on how to, to design this or else you can go to the company and uh, they, they 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 won't give it the information to you i've been looking for the information and very unsuccessfully now there's a, an, another thing that i want to comment very quickly and that this kind of device would catch um would catch a kinetic energy of air but will not catch the kinetic energy of drops and as I commented before, there's a lot of, of energy that could be um, cut if we used, uh, if we managed to capture the, 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 whole, the whole thing. Okay, I... Well, uh, given that I have very little time, I'm just going to to uh, discuss uh, uh, two two more um, possibilities. One is um, a a turbine that has not blades. Th this idea has been put forward by a Spanish company. This this uh, a, a cylinder that vibrates when when it's exposed to to, to an incoming uh, stream of uh, flow. The idea is to to match them the natural frequency of oscillation of the of, of this cylinder with the um, with the um, force that is being generated by the by the wind which is essentially related to the to the vortices that are, are behind it there's a, a reasonable amount of information and mm, I think that this device, the geometry of this device might be uh, useful 
for, for hurricanes in the sense that, first of all, it's robust. And again, it has, um, it, it has uh, the, the possibility of being portable. We can, we can take this um, device and put it in the place where we think that um, the, most of the energy will be available. Okay, um, there, there, there are lots of, uh, of comments, but unfortunately I cannot go through them uh, right now. Okay, and one crazy idea that I think that would, is worth considering oh gosh, is a, an idea that has been put forward by by um, uh, uh, people from uh, Delft University, and is forget about um, all this uh, wind to um, to uh, structure interaction, and why don't we, instead of that, try to uh, use a uh, small droplets of water droplets and charge them electrically and use the wind to move them against a, um, a, 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 power, uh, um, a, 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 a voltage, a, a, a voltage difference. If you do that, you might create a uh, power, electric power, if you play around with, uh, with the um, electric um, uh, circuits um, in, in a clever way. That's something that uh, I, I, I think that it, at this point is just a fantasy because um, this, uh, so far the, the devices that have been uh, working with this principle have just been able to, 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 to generate milliamps. But nevertheless, given the fact that we have in a very natural way water droplets and that water droplets are moving with a very fast speed. And uh, so the, it seems to me that this, um, this idea might work. Again, very many very many uh, uh, hours of research need to be done to, to see whether this is um, feasible. By the way, the, uh, a, a, a something like, uh, like this was built, but unfortunately it has been scrapped now in, in, in Delft in the Netherlands. Okay, I'll use the, the last minute I have to uh, give you I'm not going to discuss, but I made a, a summary of the, of the possible ways of catching the, the um, energy in, um, in a hurricane. And uh, I want to, to make it, um, just to emphasize that the system needs to be portable. And the only one that is available right now is not portable. So uh, I would put a big question mark on the, on the um, feasibility of using this, um, these technologies. And I, I just added a, a, a slot here with, um, with a challenge for the students and for the future researchers. Well, why don't you come, come about, uh, up and uh, proposing new design. So my uh, last um, my last slide is I would like to to try to answer them. The question is it possible to efficiently collect energy from hurricanes in Mexico? The answer is not now, perhaps in future. But uh, unfortunately, the, um, we need to do a lot of work and especially in the energy storage. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm very sorry I went over my time, but um, uh, I think 
I hope that we still have some few minutes to to comment. Yeah, thank you very much, Eduardo, for a very interesting talk. Um, yeah, so we have a, a few, a few, um, some minutes to for one or two questions. Um, in the chat, I saw that uh, Antonio Harkin had already put a comment that uh, the technique is already using new vessels. I think he's talking about the the, the sitting there. Magnus and the effect. Magnus effect, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. New vessels equipped for wind-assisted propulsion, and they are called flatnet rotors. That's correct. Yes, of course. And, uh, and also airplanes. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, if anyone has another question, you can either write it in the chat or or raise your hand using the reactions. By the way. We could also use the reactions to to clap for our speaker. Um, okay. So I, I don't see any questions, but I, I have one. Uh, so just to clarify, so um, especially given the, your your previous slide, I think I know I know the answer. But so what you were you are, you are devising is is um. Uh, is something to some sort of equipment that you can you can move to That's the right. location of the of the of the where the the, the passage of the, the hurricane that's is right that, is that right yeah. yeah yes exactly exactly and that's a that's a big problem yeah yeah exactly because the, the other the other possibility would be to have a, a equipment that is capable of of uh, of harnessing that energy but uh, ha uh, including the the, the 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 possibility of not only to 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 withstand the winds but also to to actually extract that that energy from 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 the hurricane uh, yes, when it when it occurred i guess yeah unfortunately i didn't have the, the time to discuss that point but that, that's a very very important point and that might open a another uh, another route of uh, of thinking because um, what you have is that what happens if you can collect the energy with a, 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 a wind turbine that very versatile wind turbine that can stand very low winds and very high winds and yeah, perhaps even the, the, the water drops. Let's think about it. I, yeah, I guess that would be ideal. Anyway, th th thank you, Eduardo, once again. So I don't see any other questions. So let's, let's thank Eduardo again. Um,